You see my slide, everyone? Yes. Okay. So today we don't have um, the special lecturer. I will take the class for the last week. Um, because next week, Venerable Sokti will, will take the class. He is ready to take the class for the next week. So um, this week, I will take the class instead of him for one last week. So uh, most of you are here now. Uh, we begin the class by reciting the Motosa three times all together. <clears throat> Namo tasa bhagavato rahato sama sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato rahato sama sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato rahato sama sambuddhasa My homage to the blessed one, the worthy one and the fully enlightened one. My uh, deep respect to venerable monks. Venerable Tera are present here and also a friend. My best regard to um, lay students. Nyom are also present here. <clears throat> um, again, welcome back to our discussion, Buddhism in English level four. For the, I mean, the previous week for the last month, you, um, you have learned with a foreigner, foreign teacher, foreign lecturer, starting from uh, Venerable Revata, Venerable Sopaka, um, Siyama Terinyon, and Venerable uh, Isaia. Most of them are my teacher, are my lecturer. When I did my BA in Buddhist studies, Buddhist studies in, in Myanmar, you uh, studied with them about the essence of the Four Noble Truths as well as the Noble Eightfold Path. So they have taught you, they have enlightened you, the Noble, the Noble, the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path. You learn a lot from them. So uh, from this week on, start from today. Um, you will uh, learn another point. There is the uh, dependent origination. In Pali, is padichasamupara. Uh, padichasamupara. In English, dependent origination. And today, I would I would just like to present about the noble essence, the noble essence of padichasamupara or dependent origination. Klamsa padaccha samubhat. Klamsa trisdai padaccha samubhat. I uh, add the term noble here. Mean noble essence here mean the essence that the noble one has understood. The noble one has seen. The noble one has penetrated. The noble one has comprehended. I mean, uh, this important law, this important doctrine, the doctrine of dependent, dependent origination has only been comprehended by the noble person. Only Ariya Pukala, the noble person can comprehend this important doctrine. We ordinary worldling, we Patujina cannot you know, comprehend this. Only the Ariya Pukala, especially the Buddha, the enlightened Buddha, he, uh, you know, he discovered this important doctrine. He found this important doctrine, and then he revealed, he taught this important ten doc, this important doctrine to us. So I put here the noble essence. That means the essence that the noble one has comprehended. The noble one has um, uh, penetrated. <clears throat> so here, the teaching of causality and Buddhism, 
as you are aware, the important teaching, the basic teaching in Buddhism is the teachings of causality or the teaching on cause and effect. Um, this stanza for previous week, I also presented, I also share with all of you. This is the stanza or verse. Hai tha, kia tha, rigo, chia kum nap, nong nai tha chia kum nap, nong pur sasna hai tha chia kia tha, pisa ang le tha. In English, we say, we can say stanza or verse. Ye dhamma he to popawa, te sam he tum to tha kato, aha. Te sanchayo nirotho, e wam vati mahasamano. This is the stanza that Venerable Asichi, you know, expound to Venerable, expound to Upatesa. Up, Upatesa, you know, the former name of Venerable Sariputta. <coughs> Actually, he expound only the first stanza. <coughs> Only here. Only this one. From this one. No? Ye the hammer ye the hammer head to papawa te sang hit hit on the takata ha the takato aha. The translation is the dhammas that appear originate from their causes. The causes of these dhammas are taught by the Buddha. <clears throat> so the first line mean the, the, the venerable means about the cause and effect. The cause and effect. The dhamma here is the effect, and here cause. I mean the, the first two noble truths, of course, you already studied, you already learn about the Four Noble Truths. So the first two truths, the, the Noble Truths of Suffering and the Noble Truths of the Origin of Suffering. The first two truths here, the Dhamma here, refer to the first truths, you know, the Noble Truths of Suffering and cause here, refer to the second Noble Truths, the truths of the Origin of Suffering. The causes of these dhammas are taught by the Buddha. You know, te sang he tum, te sam he tum tathakato aha. And the way to realize their cessation, the great man has also taught. The great man has taught. Here, the way here is the, um, the last noble truth, the truth of the path leading to the cessation of, of suffering. And also the cessation, here is the, the, the third noble truth, the noble truth of the cessation of suffering. So here in this stanza, Venerable Asichi referred to the four noble truths, and also he referred to the cause and effect. The law, this is the teaching of causality, the dhammas, you know, all Phenomena, phenomena that appear originate from their origin, originate from their cause. The causes of these dhammas are taught by the Buddha. The Buddha taught about the noble truth of suffering. He also taught about the noble truth of the origin of suffering. He also taught about the way leading to the cessation of the suffering and also the the cessation of suffering. Uh, when the, the, the suffering ceases, something like that. So <clears throat> here about the cause and effect. The first one is the uh, Dharma is the cause here. I put in bold here. Dharma is the cause. So the Dharma is the effect. And cause is the cause, the origin. Cessation is the effect and the way, the way leading to the cessation is the, the cause, the origin, right? 
So this is the essence of Padecha Mubada. The, the Padecha Mubada or dependent origination is about the cause and effect. It's about the causality, causal relation. In, in Buddhism, you know, the Buddha taught three things in order to understand fully, to understand clearly about the, the teachings of causality or the teaching of cause and effect. Or in other terms, we say we can say karma and its result, karma and its result or cause and effect. First one, the Buddha taught about the four noble truths. You know, you already learned, you already, we already discussed about the four noble truths. The four truths that uh, the Arya Pukala, the Arya, the noble person has been understood, has been abandoned has been you know realized and has been developed or followed you know you already learned that the first truth the truth of suffering is the factors that we have to understand we have to comprehend so the noble one has comprehended comprehended or understood the four the first noble truth and the second noble truth the truth of the origin origin of suffering the noble person also abandoned. The noble person also abandoned the second noble truth, also, uh, you know, uproot the, the second noble truth. And the noble person also realize, also attain the cessation, the third noble truth, that is the truth of the cessation of suffering. And the last one, the path leading to the cessation of suffering. The um, the noble one has also developed it, developed them the the middle path or the middle way, the noble full path. So the first uh, method the Buddha taught about the four noble truths, in order to brief, uh, you know, to give the brief explanation about the cause and effect, and then he taught another method that this dependent origination. Um, in detail to understand to understand in detail about cause and effect or the teaching of causality. And another point, the Buddha taught about causal relation. In Patana, that is in the you know eighth chapter of uh, you know Abhidhamma, Abhidhamma Sankha, comprehensive menu of Abhidhamma, you can study in the eighth chapter, Naknong Abhitam Bodhichati Prambai you can learn from that in about Patana. The, this method, um, conditional relation of Patana, the Buddha explained in great detail about the teaching of causality. So the first method, the Buddha taught about the Four Noble Truths. The second method, the Buddha taught about dependent origination. And the last method and great method, in great detail, the Buddha taught about conditional relation. If you want to understand fully, clearly about the teaching of causality in Buddhism, you need to learn Patana, which is in uh, the, the eighth chapter of Apita Matasankara. You know, uh, dependent origination, Padajasamobada, is one of the most important teachings of the Buddha. This teaching makes Buddhism different from all other religions, you know. This teaching, the teaching of uh, causality or the doctrine of Padachasamubhada make Buddhism different from all religions. Ex explain the origin of suffering and cessation of suffering. The origin of suffering and the cessation of suffering. The cause of suffering and the cessation of suffering. When the suffering originates, and how the, the suffering ceases. <clears throat> it also expounds the basis for other key concepts in Buddhism, such as theory of karma, mind process, and the process of births and deaths. This is the, uh, the essence of Padecha um, Samupada or dependent origination. This is the meaning of Padajasamubhada. What does it mean by Padajasamubhada? 
what is Padachasamubada? The word Padachasamubada is popularly translated as dependent origination. It has it also has other term, but you know, popularly translated as dependent origination. It is the combination of two words, padaja and samubara. Padaja and samubara. Padaja means dependent upon or because of or you to. Dependent upon, because of, or you to, owing to, you know. And samubara means origination or arising. You know, origination or arising. So padaja means dependent upon, uh, dependent on, because of, or um, you to, and samubara means origination or arising. As I said, uh, the term padaja samubara can also be translated in different ways, such as the dependent origination, the popular term that is used by uh, most of the people, by most of the scholar. And another term, dependent or arising, dependent co-arising, co condition arising, condition genesis, causality, the law of cause and effect, and so on. You know, there are different ways. If you read different books, you can see how the term Padajasamubada be translated in different ways. Okay. You know, the Buddha did not you know, create, did not invent the law of dependent origination. The law of dependent origination was not the creation of the Buddha. The Buddha did not invent, did not you know, create the law of dependent origination, as I said. The Buddha found, the Buddha, the Buddha discovered the law of dependent arising, dependent origination, and then he taught it to the world. He revealed it to the world, you know. Uh, in other religion, they may claim that, uh, you know, they may claim that they are God or they are, you know, omnipotent, omnipotent being, they create this, they create that. But the Buddha did not claim himself. He is the one who created this, who is the one who created that. The Buddha did not claim that he, he create or he, he invent the, the cause and effect. No, the Buddha did not create that. The Buddha did not invent that. But it is the law of nature. It is the law of, you know, uh, causality that exists by itself in the world, you know. Is here, the law of dependent origination did not invent it did not be in, did invented by the Buddha. The Buddha did not create the law of dependent origination, but the Buddha found by himself through his, you know, under the Bodhi tree, you know, under the Bodhi tree more than 200 years ago, he discovered, he, he found the law of dependent origination. The Buddha once said, uh, whether Buddha arise in this world or not, Buddha here means all the Buddhas. Mean the Buddhas. Okay, more than one Buddha. Whether Buddha arise in this world or not, arise in this world, this law of dependent origination has always been there. The Buddha only discovered and then he revealed it to the world, you know. Whether the Buddha got enlightenment or not, whether the Buddha, you know, appear in the world or not, uh, the law of dependent origination has always been here in this world, has always been there in this world. 
just like you know the law of creativity creativity sorry the law of gravitation just like the law of gravitation found by uh, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, the law of gravitation was not created by Sir Isaac Newton, of course. It has been with the world since the beginning of the world. Nobody knew about it or nobody was aware of the law of gravitation. In the same way, you know, but that's just the move that has been with the beings ever since they become into being. This was hidden. This was not known by people. Only when the Buddha uh, appeared in the world, you know, only when the Buddha appeared in, in this world and then he discovered the law of dependent origination, and then he proclaimed, and then he, he revealed the law of dependent origination to the world, to all beings. That's it. So the Buddha did not create this degree, did not create that, especially the law of cause and effect, the teachings of causality. It, it appeared in this world since the beginning of the world. You know. <clears throat> The history of dependent origination, when and how, the, this important doctrine, this important teaching appear in this world, sorry, uh, been penetrated. <clears throat> in Mahavaka Pali and the first three sutta of Odana Pali, record how the Buddha reflected dependent origination. After attaining the enlightenment, you know, the Buddha spent 49 days, seven weeks nearby the Bodhi tree, enjoying his Nibbana bliss, enjoying the bliss of Nibbana. After the Buddha got enlightenment under the Bodhi tree, he spent 49 days, seven weeks under the Bodhi tree or near the Bodhi tree to enjoy his Nibbana bliss, you know. Um, as you are aware, he got enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. In it is that is now is called Bodhagaya, the place that um, actually we we this year we we are the you know the chief organizer of the international Tibetic international Tibetic chanting. So we will organize. We Cambodian will organize the uh, this important uh, ceremony for international Tibdika chanting, you know, under the Bodhi tree in Buddha Gaya, you know, where the Buddha got enlightenment. So when the Buddha got enlightenment, after uh, he spent there 49 days, seven weeks, he, you know, he penetrated, he, you know, uh, comprehend the, the law of the Padachas and Mubada on the second week. You know, seven days after his enlightenment, the Buddha emerged from the state of deep concentration and reflected on the dependent origination. You know, I mean, the second week, the, after a week, that means the second week, the seven days after his enlightenment, the Buddha emerged from the state of deep concentration and reflected on the Padachisamubhada, dependent origination. Uh, at the first voyage of knife, as you are aware, uh, we Buddhist monks mostly, uh, the Buddha divide, uh, you know, the night is divided into three portions. The first portion or first voyage of night, second and third, start from 6 to 10 p.m. is the first voyage of night, start from 6, uh, sorry, start from 10 to 2. In AM is the second watch and start from two to six in the morning is the first is the third watch of the night. So during the first watch of night, he reflected dependent origination in the direct order, analog or arising formula, arising order. 
he reflect, he comprehend the direct order of Padachisa Mubada, just like uh, Avicca Pajaya Sankara, Sankara Pajaya Vinyanam, so on and so forth. So at the first word of the night. And just like here, uh, dependent on A, B arises, just like the right order or arising order, arising formula, you know, dependent on A, B arises, dependent on uh, ignorance, volitional formation arises, dependent on volitional formation, the consciousness, this, uh, you know, resultant consciousness arises. So this is the arising order. The Buddha reflected at the first watch of night. At the second watch of night, he reflected dependent origination in reverse order. How it sees, you know, how it sees, how the, uh, the factor sees one by one by one, one after another. The reverse order, the cessation order or cessation formula in Pali we call Padiloma, you know, the second void of the night. <clears throat> the third void of night, he reflected dependent origination in both direct order and reverse order, both Anuloma and Padiloma, the, uh, the arising order and the cessation order. Dependent upon A, B arises. If there is no A, then there is no B. Dependent upon ignorance, the volitional formation arises. If there is no ignorance, then there is no volitional formation. So on and so forth. This is how the Buddha, when the Buddha reflected the uh, dependent origination at the second week after he got enlightenment, the, the Buddha, you know, reflected on dependent origination. A short formula that you can understand easily, a short formula in order to understand the dep dependent origination. In Pali, imasmeem sati idam hoti. Imasmeem sati. If this causes exists, this effect comes into being. If there is A, there is B. If there is ignorant, there is volitional formation. If there is, uh, you know, fruit, how to say, if there is seed, there is fruit. For example, the sun mean food, the mean play. Okay. If there is no uh, no seed, there is no fruit. If this cause does not exist, this effect does not come into being. Just like if there is no A, there is no B. If there is no X ignorant, there is no volitional formation. If there is no seed, there is no tree, there is no fruit, something like that. <clears throat> so this is the short formula that you can understand easily about the uh, how things arise. Everything arise from its cause. Imasa upara idam you to the arising of this cause, the effect arises. The same, right? Dependent on A, B arises. Dependent on seed, fruit arises. Fruit, fruit grow, for example. niroda idam niruchati. Due to the cessation of this cause, this effect ceases. Where there is A, B ceases. Sorry, where there is no A, B ceases, not A.
where there is no A, B ceases. Without A, B ceases. Twelfth form formula of uh, dependent origination is known as Pavakchaka, the cycle of uh, you know existence. You know there are twelve factors, twelve formula of dependent origination is known as Pavakchaka, the wheel of life, the wheel of existences, or the cycle of ex existences. In the twelfth formula, the Buddha uses two methods the direct order or the arising formula and the reverse order or the cessation formula. The arising order or the arising formula, that means uh, the factors arise after one another. Just I said earlier, you to ignorance, they arise, cis, they arise the uh, you know, volitional formation, avijja pajaya, uh, sankhara arise. And the second order, the reverse order or succession order, when the ignorance ceases, when the uh, if there is the cessation of ignorance, uh, the volitional formation also ceases. Okay. In the law of dependent origination, there are twelve links which show the process of arising of a sentient being from one phenomenon to another in an endless chain of samsara, in an endless chain of the round of births and deaths, which is known as the wheel of life, Pavachaka. So there are 12 links. There are 12 factors which show the process of arising of a sentient being from one birds to another, from one existence to another, from one phenomenon to another, in endless chain of samsara. So that's why you need to understand, you need to comprehend the law of dependent origination. If you don't understand, you don't comprehend, and, and, comprehend and, comprehension, comprehend, sorry, the law of dependent origination, so your life will go on and on, on and on, on and on. Keep rotating in the wheel of samsara, in the round of births and deaths. So here, the wheel of life, or pavachaka, the circle of existences. <clears throat> there are 12 links of dependent origination, avijja, mental formation or volitional formation, consciousness, namarupa, uh, mind and matter, six internal basis, uh, contact, feeling, grabbing, clinging, becoming, birds, and uh, bird or rebirth, aging and death. Here, ignorance, that is avijja. In Khmer, we can say avijja, ignorance or delusion, in other term, ignorance of delusion, volitional formation, sankhara, you know, sankhara, volitional formation, some other translation, we can translate as, we can translate as uh, mental formations, consciousness, that is the consci result, resultant consciousness, vipaka chitta, you know, in vipaka chitta, Resultant consciousness, mind and matter, nam rupa, niyam nang rupa, right? Consciousness means vinyana or vinyin. Mind and matter, that is nam rupa or niyam rupa. Sixth sense basis, salayatana. Contact, pasa. Feeling, vedana, vedani. Graving, tanha. Clinging, Obadana, Obatine. Existent, Bawa. Birds, Jati, Chit. Aging and deaths, Jaramarana, Jariamarana. So it arises after one another. You to ignorance, volitional formation arise. You to volitional formation, consciousness arise. 
due to mind, due to, due to consciousness, mind and matter arise. So it arises after one another. So ignorance is the is the cause of um, volitional formation. Volitional formation is the effect of ignorance, and it become uh, cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect, and then it keep rotating, rotating, you know, until aging and that, and then in return, again, aging, you know, condition ignorance to arise. Aging and that condition ignorance to arise, keep rotating, revolving in the round of rebirths in the wheel of life, that is called povachaka, the wheel of life or the cycle of existences. <clears throat> Although it starts with ignorance, of course, it is to be noted that ignorance is not the first cause because <clears throat> samsara is beginningless. The origin of beings revolving in samsara being cloaked by ignorance cannot be discovered. You know, of, of course, uh, avicca or ignorance is not the is not the first cause to condition other you know other factors actually because samsara is beginningless. The origins of beings uh, revolving in samsara. So. Uh, Avicca can also be the effect of other factors. Uh, from uh, next week, you will learn more with the Venerable Sok TV. We will explain more how, how Avicca arise because you see here, Avicca is the, you know, the cause of other factors to arise, but Avicca is not the first cause. Avicca also arise according to other condition, according to other causes as well. So you need to understand like that, you know, because samsara is beginningless, the origin of being revolving, that means, uh, you know, keep rotating, keep cycling in samsara, being cloaked, being hidden, being blinded by ignorance cannot be discovered, you know, being, uh, you know, blind, being hidden by ignorance, by avijja, by moha, delusion cannot be discovered. The dependent origination teaches the cycle of rebirths. The cause becomes the effect, and the effect in turn becomes the cause in the universe of space and time. You know, as I said earlier, uh, you see from last slide, Avijja is the first one, but Avijja is not the first cause of cause. He's also, Avijja is also be conditioned by other factors as well. Avijja is also the cause and also the effect. And the effect in return become the cause. Okay. Okay. Dependent origination is similar to cause and effect and closely links to the noble truths, the four noble truths. As you, you learn in the Noble Truth Truths, the Four Noble Truths, the Buddha taught about the cause and also the effect. The first truth is the effect. The second truth is the four, the cause. The third truth is the effect. And the fourth truth is the cause. The truths arise from, uh, you know, the suffering arise according to desire, according to grieving. And also the cessation, the nibbana, can be realized according to uh, following the noble eightfold path. Only when we follow, we practice, we make it happen. The four noble, uh, the noble eightfold path. Only then we realize or we attain nibbana. So it is about uh, the cause and effect. Uh, it is closely linked. The dependent origination is closely linked to the four noble truths. You can understand like that. Desire causes suffering. One is dependent upon the other. Following the past causes desire to reuse and so causes suffering to be reused. 
Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, a suffering, uh, sorry, the suffering arise due to desire, due to craving, of course. Following the, for, following the past causes this desire to reduce and so causes suffering to be reduced. If you begin to see everything as de uh, dependent on everything else, then you will need to look to the larger picture where everything we think and do affects the future. Whatever we do, of course, whatever we think, whatever we say and whatever we do will affect the future if you understand the law of dependent origination. As in the writing of Venerable Thet Nhat Hanh, Thet Nhat Hanh, the Vietnamese scholar, the world is all woven of inter interconnected interconnected threads. Of course, interconnected threads. You know, the world is woven. The world is woven uh, of interconnected threads. In the essence, the Buddha did not see a separate and benevolent creator who could act on our behalf. He saw the inter interdependent of all life and the cause and effect of actions we create their own future. As I you know, mentioned earlier, the Buddha did not create the law of dependent origination. It always been appeared in this world since the beginning of this world. The Buddha did not proclaim that, proclaim that he is the creator of happiness, the creator of suffering of all beings. Uh, so we need to understand, we need to comprehend that uh, the interdependent of all life and cause and effect of action, we create one's own future. We are the owner of uh, our facts. We are the owner of our destiny. We are the owner of our life. The Buddha did not create the suffering, the happiness in this world. But the happiness and suffering in this world happen, exist according to the, the proper cause, the proper condition. That is why Buddhism at its inception was more of a way of life than a religion. Buddha is not a religion, of course, as you all are aware. In religion, you are in religion, you are told, but in Buddhism, you are taught. You know, when you are told, you need you need to obey, you need to follow, you need to do this and that according to what what is told. But if you are taught, you can learn. You can learn, you can see the reality, you can view the reality. So Buddhism uh, was more a way of life than a religion. Certainly how it is accepted as a religion by many followers who seek divine guidance from the Buddha nature. Okay, this is what we call the, the, the essence of, the noble essence of uh, dependent origination. I just give you the brief summary of dependent origination, especially uh, this 12 link, you need to understand. When you learn with, uh, you, sorry, you need to memorize all the 12 link, ignorance, volitional formation. Also in Pali, if you can, you know, ignorance, avijja, volitional formation, sankara, consciousness, vijnana, mind and matter, Nama Rupa, Sixth Sense Basis, Salayatana, Contact, Pasa, Feeling, Vedana, Grewing, Tanha, Clinging, Upadana, Existence, Bhava, Birds, Jati, Aging and Death, Jaramarana, Ignorance, Avicca. So you need to learn by heart it, to try to memorize all these 12 links. Uh, only you, uh, you, you remember, only you memorize all the 12 things you can understand easily, one by one, all the 12 factors. And then I hope from next week, Venerable TV will explain more detail in this important doctrine. Uh, you know, I send you a book in the group, Telegram group. You may have checked it.
Have you checked it, everyone? The book is, um, the title toll of the book is. Yes, Ponte, I have checked it and I think I found that it is not the lesson that you have uh, show us early. That's why I close it. <laughs> but I have checked already, Ponte. Okay, okay. Uh, from this book, The Dependent Origination or the Doctrine of Padachism Obada, you know, is the, you know, the work of Venerable uh, Mogok Siyado here. He is uh, Sayyara Mogok. He is one of the prominent meditation master in Myanmar. He link, you know, the dependent origination into real practice in Vipassana, right? His, his Buddhist name is Patanta Vimala. His name is Vimala. But, uh, you know, he's, he's known as Mogok Sayyado according to his monastery or his place he, he lived. He, uh, he led his uh, meditation uh, center named Mogok Meditation Center, also taught in uh, Vipassana internationally to uh, foreign uh, practitioner. <clears throat> so he linked this important truck doctrine to Vipassana. He's one of the prominent uh, meditation master in Myanmar. So that's why... Um, uh, maybe Venerable TV we use this book as the material, as the reference for this uh, dependent origination discussion. <clears throat> so what I want you to read from page 10, from page 10 until page 13, so you will get more idea, you, you will view more about the meaning of Padichasamu Bada, you know. Here, dependent on avicca, ignorant, there arises sankhara. Dependent on sankhara, there arises vijnana, so on and so forth. Okay. And it is easily to be born in mind that this doctrine is nothing but your own self. If you understand about the dependent origination, that means you understand your own self. Your conduct, your aggregate, your nama rupa manyan matter. Yes, it is much more than that. It shows the causal continuum of your so-called self. What is called self? What is called I, you, we, they, this and that? It is just the kanda, the aggregate. It just uh, the, the manyan matter, just the base, ayatana, the hatu element, the not both truth and the dependent origination. What you cling, what you call, what is self? You think that is I, self, atta. It is the kanda, the nama rupa, the origin, the, the sorry, the dependent origination. So there is no I, there is no uh, self, only nama rupa, only kanda or aggregate. Okay, but the Chasamubara actually is in itself cyclic order of arising and passing away of Dhamma or uh, Khandas. You know, in Satipatthana, the four foundation of mindfulness, that is the last factors that the Buddha expound us to comprehend, expound us to, uh, to contemplate the Dhamma in the Dhamma. So how to contemplate the Dharma in the Dharma? You contemplate the five aggregate. You contemplate the four noble truths. You contemplate the cause and effect, the uh, dependent origination. One thing arises because of another thing. About the, the teaching of causality, this is the contemplation of Dharma. If you want to understand about, uh, you know, the last factors of the four foundation of mindfulness, you need to understand the Padechasamubhada, the dependent origination. The old phenomenon gives rise to another and in endless continuum. Such phenomenon of arising and passing away is called Padechasamubhada and Padechasamubhana. Padechasamubhada arise after one another and also, Padachasamubhada, it is the if 
uh, you know, how to say, uh, the cost become the effect, the effect in return become the cost for another factors to arise, something like that. The function of which no creator or God could start or draw to a halt, this is, this function is the relinking of what I just moved Makapala is only Dhamma, which can break the link of what I just moved And when there is no linking, it is called Nibbana. So when you break uh, the link uh, between uh, one another, you can break the link and you can break the cost. When there is no cost, there is no effect. When the cause cease, the effects also cease, you know. So when uh, only maka uh, pala, that means only the past and the fruition, uh, dhamma, which can break the link of the Jasamubhada. That's why this is the noble essence, the noble essence of the Jasamubhada. I mean, the essence that only the noble one, the, the, only those who attain, the Maka Pala, only those who attain the past and fruition can, you know, break the link of Padajasamubhada. Just here. <clears throat> if you know, it will break. If you do not know, you will go around and around. This is dependent origination. Most of us, most of the ordinary world worldling do not know that, do not understand that, do not know that we uh, we are in the factors of dependent origination. We are the five gigate. We are the what we call I or V or they. This is just the five gigate, just the mind and matter, just the dependent origination. But if you know, if you understand it, if you do it, you understand it, it will break. You will break the cause that is the condition for the effect. But if you do not know, you will go around and around. So just like the whirling that is, uh, you know, woven in the uh, in the cloak of, uh, how to say, being cloaked by being blinded or hidden by ignorance, we do not see things as they really are. So we keep go on and on, on and on, keep rotating, rotating in the round of rebirths, in the wheel of existences. So you understand, you try to understand this. When you understand this, when you view this, you see this as they really are, you will break. And if you break, you will not go around and down, down, and down in the samsara. So uh, this is the topic for today. As I mentioned earlier, I just uh, give you the brief essence of the teaching of this teaching, the, the doctrine of Padajasamubhara, dependent origination. You will learn more. You will get to understand more with Panadabo Sok TV from last week. Okay. I hope you learned something from uh, today. Okay, I think any question? Hello. If you have question, you can ask. Okay, new Melanie. Na thank you, Mister Kru. Na I have something about the uh, the reverse order. Uh, is it? Uh, the affect uh, become the cause. That's what called the reverse order. Okay. Uh, the Buddha taught in Padajasamubada in two formula, in two methods, the direct order and the reverse order. Here, uh, you know, ignorance is uh, here, ignorance is the cause, and due to ignorance, the volitional formation arises, and due to voli volitional formation, the consciousness also arises, so on and so forth, until aging and death. And if there is no ignorance, 
if there is no B, oh sorry, if there is no A, if there is no ignorance, there is no volitional formation. If there is no volitional formation, there is no consciousness. If there is no consciousness, there is no mind and matter. If there is no mind and matter, there is no sixth sense basis. This is the reverse order, you know? You know? Right. Yeah. So, so when we relate to one another, like the cause and the effect, the cause and the effect. When, when you are brood, when you remove ignorance, there is no volition of formation, there is no karma. There is no bad action. There is no good action. You know, uh, volitional formation here is referred to chetana. Chetana. There are how to 29, 29 chetana in chetta in consciousness. Uh, Twelve unwholesome consciousness. Uh, eight. Uh, how to say eight sopana consciousness. I mean how to say beautiful consciousness. And also tw um, five and four, seven, no? five and four, seven, seven, uh, Mahakata consciousness, Mahakata chat. So volitional, voli volitional formation here is referred to uh, Chetana or wholesome and unwholesome consciousness. How to say so? A volitional, con volitional formation arise according to ignorance. Without, ign without ignorance, volitional formation also uh, cease, something like that. So ignorance cause the volitional formation to arise and volitional formation again cause the consciousness to arise. This is the, uh, how to say, arising order. And the reverse order or cessation formula Ignorance, when ignorance ceases, volitional formation also ceases. When volitional formation ceases, consciousness also ceases, so on and so forth. Okay, so, understand you? Yes, 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 thank you so much. Now I fully understand about it. Okay. Uh, any question? Uh, I have a question, Venerable Master. Uh, my question is, you, you told that in other religions, you were taught, and in Buddhism, you are you are, you are taught, and in other religion, you are told. Yes. Uh, can can you give more some ex examples because I'm not clear about this point. Okay. Thank in you. if in religion, religion is how to say the system of God, the system of belief, is something like that. So uh, in, in religion, you are told, that means you are told to do this. You are told to do this. You need to obey. You need to follow. You need to do this. You need to do that. But in Buddhism, the Buddha said that, Ehi pasiko, you know, when you want to understand about my, my teaching, you need to come and, and learn. You need to come and see. See here refer to, to see to see things as they really are. To see with vipassana. You know, only when you see with vipassana, that means you understand me. You uh you know me. You know, I mean the Buddha taught to the, the followers, come here and learn, not come here, just believe and come here. The Buddha did not force anyone to 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 join the order but the, the buddha you know taught when you understand when you clearly understand you can come and and learn with with my dispensation so uh, in religion you are you are told to do this just like in other religion you are told and then you need to obey you need to follow without any proof without any reason but in buddhism you are taught and then you can learn you can uh, practice you can see with your own understanding uh, you got what i mean yeah yeah thank you whatever okay okay any more question if if no more question i will you know get you to discuss in the breakout room discussion okay so if there is no more questions so nyom sutiri can you have
Yeah, when you want to talk, please uh, un un unmute. But if you don't talk, just mute yourself because your your place is a different a different device. Okay? You have different different yeah, program. I have, I have a training. <laughs> so one red ball and everyone you want to share your Thanks. idea or any so question once again related to the topic. And yeah. greeting all yums. I, I I might say that I couldn't really participate today since my uh health not really well. I having a cold, so my voice was a bit. If I talk, it could hurt my throat. So, uh, and since sincerely apologize for that inconvenience. You mute yourself. Um, I'm delighted to be a listener for today. Oh, okay, okay. And you're listening to Tong Daro. Tong Daro, are you there? Hello, one and all. Okay. Do it, please. Um, I just listen. <laughs> okay. Oh, Christina, are you available? Oh. <laughs> I'm here. I tried to talk more. Okay. Do it, please. Kana. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, I'm here. I missed I missed part of the of the school's class today because I forgot what day it was. <laughs> but it was Monday. So I was late. I didn't hear a lot of it. I don't even know what the question is right now. So you can help me. Uh, Thank okay. you, Ponte. Well, so today, over, Most over the there, deepest respects to July 4th, right? Mrs. You have yeah, yesterday was have... July 4th, okay. so I forgot that today was Wednesday. I thought it was the end of a weekend. Okay. Got confused. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So no idea, no no question. What what should we do? What uh, I forget. Selaya tena pasa and betani and tanha cling uh clinging tanha mean uh attachment disappear and clinging disappear and then uh, disappear uh jati jara marana soka prateva to according to my understanding. Can uh, when the bottom rank can have you any uh, idea about the particular simple part that that's my I have note from that. Yeah, thank thank you for your sharing about what we have learned. Uh, I just remember a good a good phrase that our teachers have said is. In other religions, you are told, and Buddhism, you are taught. So, I can I I have also asked our teacher to clarify about this point as well. Yeah. Yeah. The first phrase is, other religions, you are told. You are told mean uh you you cannot disagree. You you have to abide abide by their rules, their regulations. So we we cannot uh we cannot learn it we cannot experience it we just follow what you are, you have what what you what they 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 told you to do so you have to do follow as they told you and Buddhism you you are freedom in Buddhism to learn everything what the Buddha taught you can ask. You can 
ask others to clarify what you have learned, uh, what you have followed. For example, uh, the five precepts that you observe, you can ask others to, to clarify, to understand more. So you, you, you are free in Buddhism. And another point that I want to talk is uh, the major factors of uh, of the of the existence is ignorance at which year. So uh, the ignorance is the big problem that we have to learn and understand. So. Um, I have no more idea. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Venerable. And what about uh, Venerable uh, Sokui? Do you have any idea about Parichasumupata? Uh, Thank you. For uh, the Parichasumupata is the dependent origination that is the uh, this meaning of understanding to uh, but um, the causings of the air, uh, which is the one's the basics of creation, anything. Uh, we, the people do something wrong because so we have uh, our which or uh, ignorance. And more people that doing something bad, bad it is also the ignorance. And we have learned in this section is about the arisings. Something arise because of one another, or we can call it cause or reflex. And if there is no Sing before there is no sing next, or we can say uh, if no A's or without A's, they are also uh, without, or there is no B. It is a uh, something that uh, is deeply understand about this, but. In my opinions, it's like uh, when we cheat the plants or rice, we will get uh, something or like like fruit. So, dependent origination is taught us to understand well about the cause and effects, the about the, the origination of something that happened in in next or that are happening now because of the passing that we did or the passing that someone did before. Or in the futures that gonna be happens because of something that, that we're doing for now. This is the origination of the uh, the cause and effects or we can say dependent origination. So thank you. This is more for my idea. Okay, thank you. <laughs> what about Khun Mum Venerable or the lay people, lay person? Uh, okay, if there is no, I want to ask a question. Anyone can answer. The teacher, uh, teacher said that only the noble person that can break the uh, the RVG, I mean, can to develop the, or cultivate the, uh, the wisdom, but the Putujon cannot break the RVG. Why? Why only the noble person? Can you explain? Um, 
yeah. It when is the, the natures of the everything that it's like that uh, I take it example uh, if we learn in grade 12 so we we well known understanding about that uh, grade 1, grade 2 and grade 3 until grade 11 so we can do the exercise of it so if we are only in grade 5 in grade uh, 6 we cannot do the lesson or exercise in grade 12 the really thing or is the it's like we are normal person or normal student we cannot do it example like that no bar person just only can break the dependent origination because uh, no bar person have well understand or well examination well observation of the uh, thing that arising or thing that have gonna be a rise in the future they they break one thing is uh what we gonna say about it <laughs> i gonna stop here <laughs> move to other oh. okay thank you <laughs> Yeah. 2003 and um, but just study but I don't know how to to learn English but after that I I I learned the way that the the best learner is my guest house in uh, the place that I used to live in and I just learned from the best speaker. I just learned. And then I just learned to speak with myself every day. And then I just joined to learn with club or with other seminar. And also I just applied to test myself like public speaking, debate. Yeah, that more improve. So you need to challenge yourself, Vanabo. If you okay. have term or you have... So you need to apply to like a uh, public speaking and test. Okay, um, thank you so much, Venerable, for your advice. And I heard you started learning English in 2003. That means you are much yeah. <laughs> But when uh, I, yeah, I was I... young, but uh, when I heard your uh, word that uh, that oh don't move but sorry. that practice um uh, Buddhism uh they study and they practice you know it's for meditation very important for their life um you maybe understand about uh Thailand and Puma and the world you know it's up in Cambodia but in Cambodia they like to study but they don't like to practice this is my idea that I see in our country so thank you so much because on time do you have anything not not yet time Ponte. just only uh, maybe the admin come to record our boy where uh, she go to another room already yeah uh, actually they are they are related with uh, the behavior of people actually after uh, my rule uh, for for regime i mean that uh, cambodian people become lazy and they fear something and this is something that inside us and we don't know what happened it seems like the uh, we we lost hope and we, we we don't know who we are actually yet. We try to copy everything from other. We try not to uh, understand uh, who we are, like what is my, uh, uh, we have like this, not like this, like that, our culture, blah, 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 our history, blah, blah, blah. We don't try to know it. Uh, what I noticed from my understanding, uh, Dana, it means thin is the easiest way and people love it because they can find 
money easily or maybe it's uh, the best way that we can sometimes that i also do do dana uh, because i cannot go to do this or that by myself but since i noticed that uh you know why why do you spend like a million dollar uh, uh compared to one hour or one hour or maybe one day medication or vipassana it uh uh, Vipassana will get more than do that not one million, something like that. So in case that we know about uh, uh, it more and more, so people will learn. But however, uh, in case we share in the group, for example, I try to learn from some of my friends, lay women or lay men, or maybe also uh, some vulnerable. We also know about uh, uh, Vipassana meditation, but actually even uh, honestly, uh, our vulnerable try not to do vipassana. Uh, our vulnerable try to escape. So how we move on? So it's really difficult. However, I try to share in the group already that my people are lazy, lazy by nature. So in case that we want to move on, we change ourselves first. Me too. I feel like I'm lazy. I don't want to do the job. I don't want to do this. I just want, yeah, uh, easy, easy, fun, blah blah blah. But since I noticed that. We cannot make it. Only we do we pasana. Only we use ourselves to get everything around us. So yeah. Anyway, I start to do we pasana. Actually, I I work. I cannot uh, spend ten days for we pasana in uh, uh, one uh, uh, like uh, uh, the the class of uh, we pasana. But actually, I try my best, and I can show to all my friends that they are stay at home. I say, oh, I cannot go. But I practice myself already. Only our cell devoted for uh, uh, we know clearly about parichasma. But and we need to wake up. Wake up. It means that put it down. Our laziness, kill it by do it right now. Especially vulnerable. Uh, who is the first one who start? If all vulnerable try to uh, change the behavior, it means that when all vulnerable in Cambodia, when uh, he speak out with the softly word and it is meaningful. All laymen and lay women will follow, but look at right now. It is not a mistake, but anyway, all of us are lazy. And it is, uh, we call it upatin. Upatin is stuck somewhere with family, with job, with uh, study, with everything. But we don't know that why uh, Thailand uh, or why Myanmar or Sri Lanka, they they do, uh, they practice uh, vipassana and meditation, blah, blah, blah. This is their food. If they cannot do meditation or vipassana a day, it means that they cannot stay. Uh, it's something that uh, hurt them. So they try, uh, they really want it. They cannot eat one uh, type of food, but they cannot uh, 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 stop doing vipassana for one day. And if you know uh, something like that, even me right now, uh, one, uh, two times per day, like five o'clock, I start uh, Vipassana because after I finish uh, the class and then uh, after the, the, the class, sometime uh, 10 o'clock or 10.30, I start another hour or sometime today I start my Vipassana early, just like from six to uh, seven o'clock. So uh, last week I start from 10.30 to 11.30. I need to do it every day. It become like our behavior, it usual, and it will repeat day by day. And it become like, if I don't do vipassana, I, I cannot stay. But if I cannot uh, uh, eat uh, one meal or one food, yeah, I can stay, just something like that. So uh, when we know about Padichasama, but only one way to go is only vipassana. Meditation, sometimes we call it samatha, it's another part, but only vipassana that, that can, uh, uh, reveal us a way to go to Nibbana. Thank you. This is something about me. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah, or anything maybe with the, with the uh, minimum income just for mm -hmm. kids. So I try to save up, but you know, doesn't matter how much I save up, there's nothing left. And then why I try to spend more, but I spend on what I need, not what I want. So whatever I need, I'm going to buy it this time. Mm -hmm. It's still, you know, most money still there. I mean, it's still enough. I say, huh, what's going on? 
So why do I need to sell up so much and I don't have anything to do to uh, to so I I just uh, practice myself that I will buy what I need, not what I want, and then uh, we we'll see what happens. It still doesn't. It's still the same thing. It means that oh, this is the way of life now that I can spend, I can share. And mm -hmm. one thing that uh, I uh, teached one of my neighbor in here, she's Cambodia too. She said that she doesn't have money, uh, so she cannot uh, uh, do anything to help others. I say you don't need money to do things. You mm -hmm. have the energy. You just go there and help clean up, have uh, organize, and uh, you know. Uh, do, you go to the temple, do wash the dishes, uh, set up the table, clean up the, the temple. That's all you need to do. You get a lot of things from it. You don't have to have money. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of way to do a uh, good deed. Mm -hmm. uh, I explained to her that and she, she didn't say anything. <laughs> I hope right. she is. Uh, yeah, she discouraged mm -hmm. from going to the temple because she doesn't have the money. I say okay. money, yes, of course. Uh, you need money for everything. But if you don't have enough money to uh, share, to donate, you donate your energy. You have it in full in you. You can do anything you want. From cleaning to... If you have more than you need, you can share. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you have more than you need, you can share, but you don't have it. You know, I yeah. run, I run the temple. I do cleaning. I did clean the bathroom, uh, clean the dishes. I can... Thankful, I'm Jethro. You didn't, I didn't hear your voice. You hear me? No, you hear me now? Ah, yes, yeah, I hear you now. Okay. Welcome back. You have to, thank you. Our main room. Okay. <clears throat> To cut my speech. I cut your speech. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> no, my not enough time. Not enough time. Okay, tomorrow you can, uh, sorry, tomorrow, uh, for next week, you can have more time to discuss, I hope. Um, I really enjoy today talking to uh, Okay. About my real life, to apply the Dhamma into it is really amazing. The result is really amazing. Life I can't is, believe it. Uh, life Lung is Chak. about the noble truth, of course, and also about the dependent origination. The Buddha said that to become enlightened, you need only to understand the noble truth, the four noble truths and the dependent origination, of course. <laughs> whenever you understand, whenever you comprehend the Four Noble Truths, and then you can, you know, condition, I mean, you can create the, the good condition for yourself, and you I hope you can enlighten yourself. <laughs> uh, I said um, the dependent origination is comprehended comprehended by the noble person so only the noble person i use the simple terms because no matter where who you are no matter where, where is it only when you understand only when you uh, comprehend the four noble truths and dependent origination you can you know god enlightenment you know that's why the dependent origination is comprehended, is penetrated by the noble one, the noble person, the uh, Ariya Pukala, that's it. 
And the normal essence of Vedicca Samuppada is uh, if you know, if you know, you will practice. If you do not know, you will go around and around. Your life will keep it rotating, keep going, cycling, weaving from one another, from one life to another, something like that. So you need to understand what is ignorance from one factors to another. Ignorance, condition, volitional formation, volition, volitional formation, condition, uh, resultant consciousness, so on and so forth. You need to understand. And as we discussed uh, from previous course, there are uh, 12 factors, uh, how to say, link connection, and so on and so forth. You will learn more with Venerable Soft TV from next week. From today, I would like to say goodbye. I uh, managed the class uh, from last month and also today, the first month of, uh, how to say, July. So for about six weeks we meet together so for my mistakes i'm sorry for my uh, blah 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 english for my you know uh, speaking if i have mistake if i have done wrong any speech or action so i would like to ask your apology and may you be well and happy forever may you attain past and fru fruition in this very life Saru, saru, saru. So I would like to finish the class by now. Okay. Very sad. Just sorry. So we decide together so so we decide together to end the class by radiating our loving kindness metta to love to all sentient beings dukha patta jane dukha paya patta jane paya soka patta jane so may all beings who have fallen into suffering be without suffering, who have fallen into danger be without danger, who have fallen into sorrow be without sorrow. Saru, saru, saru. Okay. Enjoy your day, enjoy. Thank you so much for your teaching. This Thank you so much, teacher. See you next time, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. To all my brother and dharma sister.